Dan, I, I wanted to pick it up in terms of the situation we're seeing in Germany. And, you know, as you mentioned, it might seem so far away, but there is chaos in the energy markets. Um, but can you just go back for one moment and, and talk a little bit about the relation to the wind turbines? I don't know that people are aware of that. And what's the significance? Well, yeah, the gas turbines were uh, significant. Canada, through Siemens, had been ordered to uh, receive the order to uh, repair the turbines that uh, compress and get uh, natural gas from Russia through uh, the main pipeline, Nord Stream 1, into Germany. Uh, those were undergoing repairs in Canada with the sanctions that uh, Canada agreed to. It meant that we were no longer going to supply Russia. But, uh, of course, this also meant that at the very time in which there's repairs and maintenance happening on Nord Stream 1, this is a slow time of the season, but, uh, you know, we need to build up those natural gas inventories in places like Germany. Uh, this is the time in which you do it. They desperately needed that part so much so that they... We're now getting a bit, maybe it was a slip of the tongue, but the uh, which has now been walked back. But I think the foreign affairs minister of Germany made it very clear that without that, those turbines from Canada, uh, they would not be in a position to help Ukraine. And so you have a sort of uh, a real standoff in which uh, Germany is vulnerable to Russia, needs to give Russia the turbines so they can get natural gas so they can keep their economy going. That level of vulnerability. Uh, is unseen in our time. And it really is a product of uh, a country like Germany and Europe and the world having put far too much of its efforts towards renewables. And of course, when they didn't work, uh, we now see uh, that uh, Vladimir Putin has been able to play, uh, you know, uh, the, the game of ransom and has them literally over a barrel. Hmm. And, um, and to your point as well, as it relates to Germany and, and the uh, importance of manufacturing for their economy, but also Europe as a whole, and we think about the economy globally, I mean, that puts the potential for significant downward pressure um, for, for the global growth outlook, um, perhaps less so for North America, but of course we, are, we still are so globally interconnected. Um, just for a moment here in terms of taking a look at Russia um, and the factor that it plays on the global economy and where we see their oil and gas going, um, what, what's the latest from your perspective? Um, and I say that in the sense that, let me back up for a second. I, I say that in the sense that there's the view that we might see, you know, two separate economies, right? Um, the the Russia-China, in other words, Russia supplying China and economies do well when you have cheap energy. And then there's the rest of us. Well, Europe for sure has expensive energy. And then let's talk about Canada and America. But right now, how do you see the relationships playing out? What's going on? Uh, a complete realignment of, uh, of, of the geopolitical power structure. Uh, Russia is not being hurt by the sanctions whatsoever. In fact, it's doing quite well. Um, and it doesn't matter that uh, we've gone uh, to the banking sanctions. Uh, that hasn't worked either. Russia is doing very well, uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, it has been, uh, you know, it has been somewhat hemmed in. But it's doing a lot more damage to Europe and in terms of not just Germany, but the stability of Europe. We see this morning that Germany is demanding, asking European nations uh, to join with it in a 15 percent uh, reduction in, uh, in, in rationing, if you will, of natural gas. Uh, Portugal, Spain, Italy basically said, no, forget it. We're not part of Greece. We're not part of this. Uh, so you could see very well, much, not so much the pressure on Russia as much as the fragmentation of uh, the European Union. And I think that's a very serious outcome. Uh, and it really points, Catherine, to what happens when you mess around with energy security. This story is really about the world saying no to hydrocarbons, wishing it away as if it, uh, it doesn't matter. And now we find ourselves in a position uh, of extraordinary vulnerability, not just for Europe, but the consequences are going to be felt here in Canada as well. Uh, and no, no irony lost in the fact that Canada with large reserves of natural gas and oil, missed this opportunity and did so deliberately. Uh, absolutely. Let, let's talk about that in terms of the impact on Canada. How do you see this? Well, right now, of course, because, yeah, we're not selling enough of, of these products. Uh, the Canadian dollar is taking a hit. It takes 129 pennies to buy U.S. dollars. That's leading to inflation. Look, even the bank governor, the governor of the Bank of Canada, Tiff Macklin, last Thursday, Friday, had to admit after his 1% shocking increase that, you know, the Canadian dollar is not responding to the therapy of higher oil prices. That's leading to inflation, which is in turn leading him in part to raising interest rates. Canadians, I think, are starting to waken up uh, to this reality that uh, we can't forsake 
uh, our, uh, our our gift uh, of abundance of clean energy and uh, the energy that the world desperately needs, especially our natural gas. 17 projects, LNG, all gone. And how did that happen? Interference by the government and uh, unfortunately bending over backwards to climate catastrophes. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. More to discuss.